Well... Welcome back to Bottles from the Deep. We're in an exciting new location today. We've got this amazing 1860s railway viaduct above us. Behind us, one of the largest rivers in Scotland. And we're in a small village here, which literally means hollow by the castle. And the castle refers to a fort from the Iron Age, which is up on the hill over there. The town is swimming in history. It's a village that punches way above its weight, being the seat of law and order in the area, in the kind of post-medieval period. Uh, it was even said that the famous uh, Highlander and cattle rustler Rob Roy, Jacobite sympathizer, was imprisoned and spent the night here before escaping. Did he grab a, an onion bottle of wine on the way out and smash it into the river? Who knows, maybe we'll find it. One of the reasons I chose this area, apart from this wonderful bridge where people could have been hoying off uh, cod bottles in the Victorian period, was because it's also the location of a rope ferry originally and then a chain ferry later. So the, the ferry was actually on a chain and it would be kind of cranked across the river uh, and you could take horses, livestock, uh, carriages, that kind of thing. Attach this rock is perhaps one of the attachment points for the mobile causeway which would have taken the ferry into the water and it's still very much here and in good nick. Behind me, look at this, the chain itself is still here, really beefy. So let's see if we can follow the chain into the water and find the two kind of locations where the ferry would have been moored. Perhaps there we'll find a good cash for bottles. Now I have to say that this has definitely been one of our favourite dives we've ever done. Not only because of the sheer volume of treasure we found, but also because of the abundance of wildlife, the clarity of the water, and just the beauty of the underwater plants and wildlife. First find of the day, and a good sign for this section of river, is this very old 1700s hand-blown bottle base. And you can see all the wrinkles and crinkles where it was blown by hand. And this is a top which was found very close and it quite possibly is the top of the bottle dating from around the 1780s to probably very early 1800s. Next up I see a very exciting little shape in the water. Give it a waft and extract it and it is a lovely aqua burst lip ink bottle. It cleaned up really nice and you can see these lovely little chamfers on the shoulders. It's called burst lip because that's where the blowpipe would have detached from the ink giving it that sharp burst kind of cracked appearance. Something definitely lurking in amongst the stones there. and You can see the lip of it. Extract it and it is a very small salt glazed blacking pot. Now it's very portable size so I wonder if it was something for maybe a fabric dye or blacking of shoes that you could have taken in your pocket, used up and then discarded. Now this is a fairly momentous find because this is our first American bottle we've ever found in Scotland and it is a Chesebra manufacturing company Vaseline and it's a very early Vaseline pot dating from the 18, late 1800s and it's got a rolled lip and it's a mouth-blown variety in manganese glass which will glow into a lovely kind of purple hue when exposed to UV light. The Vaseline was discovered when early oil prospectors were using kind of petroleum jelly to lubricate their machinery and they're also doubling it up to help burns and skin disorders and that kind of thing. And Mr. Chesterborough noticed this and turned it into a product which he marketed all around the world. Very exciting. We see a cod bottle down there and have a look at it. Unfortunately, it's got a broken lip um, and actually no embossing on this one. Perhaps it's a later one which would have had a label applied to it, a little bit of a cheaper cod. Um, so obviously had a rough time in the river here and has been smashed, sadly. Um, the search continues. Not far from the broken cod was this broken Dunkel ginger beer. Really, really desperate to find one of these whole, so this is a bit sad to see. Another exciting fragment down there looks like a piece of flagon. We bring it up and it actually says John Thompson, and it is the name of the local hotel slash inn which was built in the 1760s, which is only about 150 meters away from this spot. So it's a fantastic piece of local history, and this would have contained some kind of uh, bulk alcohol, maybe a beer, a gin, a rum, whiskey, that kind of thing, and uh, would have belonged to the hotel. This is the hotel now, and as I said, it was built in about the 1760s, and is still uh, an inn to this day. Then we come across this really beautiful fragment of what's probably a chamber pot, and it's got this amazing leaf motif on it with these kind of circular kind of floral patterns uh, intersecting it, and it's an absolutely amazing decorative chamber pot. And next to it, uh, we find a whole complete little pot with its lid on, and it's got something like um, maybe a milk of magnesia in there, some sort of white liquid, white powder. Bit of a mystery find here. Is it the bottom of a candlestick or something else? If you know what it is, please let us know. 
friends of the channel may recognize some of these we found before and uh, always like to bring them home. They're enormously strong, beefy and utilitarian and blacking pots. And this one's got a lovely salt glazed. Unfortunately, it's got no maker's mark, but it's in very good condition. These would have all been hand thrown by potters, probably producing in the tens of thousands over their lifetime, if not more. And um, these would have been used for things like blacking shoes, blacking sort of horse harnesses, blacking stoves, uh, and very useful strong pots to transporting. This is a brief historical interlude to show you some amazing artifacts we found in the graveyard next to the river. So I've just made a rather macabre discovery in the graveyard of the local church here. These amazing wrought iron cages you can see behind me uh, were called mort safes and their purpose was to be placed over newly dug graves to protect the bodies from body snatchers. And uh, in the kind of 18th century and into the 19th century, uh, body snatching was incredibly lucrative and quite commonplace in Scotland. And uh, so these amazing heavyweight cast iron constructions were placed over the graves and they would protect the body for a matter of months until it was uh, relatively decomposed and it was actually no use to the uh, budding anatomists of the day. So there's three sizes here and they would have been sort of cycled around, which just goes to show even in small villages like this, body snatching was a rife practice. Rewinding almost a thousand years prior to the mort safes, we find this amazing Pictish slab with a armed rider with a spear and horseback and he's walking on a snake. Now, this was actually discovered around the 1870s and it was fallen over and they lifted it up, cleaned it up and resurrected it. It's also got an amazing cr Pictish cross on the other side. The cross is in a false relief with a roll molded border and features a circular center with bosses in the circular armpits. The base in the shaft is embellished with incised intern spirals. The entire cross is filled with interlace. The church here was said to be founded in 650 by St. Ked, and I wonder if this stone slab actually dates to around 650. That would be amazing. Very exciting. Looks like we may have found the chain from the original Victorian chain ferry. Now this chain would have been fed through a roller wheel, which would have gone to a cranking handle, and then the ferryman would have been cranking the platform ferry across the river. And you can see the little mobile causeway there with wheels and the ferry there with its platform. And amazingly, we follow the chain and it leads us to some wooden wreckage. This is very exciting because there's a story in 1900 of the ferry being ripped from its chain or from its moorings and traveling downriver in the wind and essentially sinking, possibly crashing into the viaduct. And uh, luckily, I think everyone survived and escaped but the ferry was lost. And is this the upturned inverted ferry platform that we've just found, the mains of the ferry platform? It definitely looks like the deck of the ferry, but upside down, as you can see by some of the pillars. What's amazing is in this clip here, that looks like one of the wheels, which could well be from the chain winding mechanism and possibly even the crank handle here, if you look very closely. On this picture, you can see exactly what we're talking about. So maybe this is uh, for a future mission, go down and see if we can recover the wheel and see if it is indeed the ferry crank wheel. See something very exciting down there. Could it be a 1700s sort of hand-blown bottle? We pick it up and uh, realise actually, although it looks old, it is just pretending to be old and it's in fact something probably only about 20, 30 years old. Uh, brandy bottle or something like that and it's uh, got machine-made marks on the bottom, even though it's pretending to look like a very old one. That's probably part of the marketing gimmick of the company. Not far from the fake hand bone bottle, we discover this amazing Galloway cream pot. And it's uh, preserved cream, would have been preserved with something like uh, boric acid, which is actually very bad for you. Uh, a little bit like everything in those days. And it would have been a uh, very thick cream, a little bit like Cornish clotted cream you can buy in the shops today. Very robust bottle, which is why it's withstood the rigors of life a hundred years under the river. And is a great find. We continue and we find quite a few in this area broken pod cod bottles very sad probably people stealing the marbles before tossing the carcasses of the cod back into the water and uh, we come across quite a few here but then finally something under those rocks there one of the most amazing conditioned cod bottles we've ever found and it is a dunkeld cuthbert cod and it still got its rubber stopper in it's incredible condition. It's kind of not a scratch on it. It's been absolutely wedged into those rocks for a hundred odd years. And uh, we can see it's a red ferns made in Barnsley. I mean, just look at the condition of it. It didn't take that long to clean this up to this condition. 
uh, absolutely fantastic. This is probably the top card I think in our collection in terms of condition. And you can see it in front of the Athol Fountain there, which is the motif design in the front, which it's based on, and a landmark of Dunkeld. And here we have a little kind of gum bottle, which is also very nice, in a burst lip. It's got lovely little kind of chamfered shoulders. A very nice and pleasing little aqua bottle with some bubbles in the base. And uh, another shot of the amazing grasses which flow around in the current and the flow here. Absolutely beautiful spot. One of the most stunning spots I think we've ever snorkeled actually, just in terms of wildlife and uh, scenery under the water. Really, really amazing. of the spookier, deeper, darker spots in the river now where you can't really see anything from the surface and you have to sort of dive down to actually have a look. And we find, ooh, what's that? Is that a cod? Oh no, it's broken. What a shame. Broken for the marble probably as well, before it was tossed in. It's uh, Robertson's from Aberfeldy. Luckily we've got absolutely heaps of these, so it's not uh, too sad. We can always keep this one for a cut down. And then not far from it, ah, another broken and imperial stout stoneware bottle from Perth. That would have been absolutely lovely as well. Probably would have had a two-tone glazed top. Alas, we find another broken cod, and this one from Perth as well. I have to put it with the others and consider cutting them down at some point, perhaps, into glasses. I found another one of those kind of fake hand-blown brandy bottle things, and uh, inside it was a lovely little freshwater eel. <laughs> and he popped out and kind of scurried away into some rocks. And it's amazing to think that the eels are actually using the Victorian and uh, latter rubbish of old for little houses and places to hide. Can you see the bottle lurking down there amongst the pebbles? Go down and pick it up. And it is indeed a lovely embossed oh, swing top. It's got the Athol fountain motif and from Dunkeld again. This time it's not a Cuthbert, it's actually a John Wright and Co. So a rivaled Cuthbert perhaps. I wonder who was first to use the Athol fountain motif and uh, cleaned up really, it was really hard to clean, but cleaned up quite well in the end. A little bit, a few scuffs here and there, but pretty nice. We found one of these before, but we don't know too much about Mr. J. Wright. Uh, we'll have to do some more research, perhaps a trip to the archives. And we can see this bottle was made by the Kilner Bros Limited, and uh, all their bottles always survive very well, they're always very beefy. Here it is in front of the Athol Fountain. It's nice to take it home to its kind of uh, hometown where it would have been purchased years ago before being travelled miles and miles away to get lobbed in a river. Could this be our favourite find of the day? Apart from perhaps discovering the sunken ferry, it's this amazing cream pot that's been down there probably for well over a hundred years. It's at Cooper & Co's Fresh Thick Cream, Glasgow, Liverpool and London. And it was uh, one of those dives where you just kind of go down and hope you'll see something, a little glint of white, pull it up and it's this immaculate cream pot. Cleaned up really, really nice, nice shiny glaze, lots of luster and a lovely little kind of smooth rounded shoulder and a little flared lip at the top. Absolutely gorgeous. And not far from it as well, also fairly deep, was this um, another sort of plain white glazed uh, blacking pot. And uh, that would have been filled with some sort of more liquidy polish or stove blacking type stuff. Would have had a lovely label. It's got some nice crazing around the top as well. And uh, near that, although I forgot to get a footage of picking it up, was this little refill ink bottle. So this would have had um, ink in it and you would have refilled your ink wells and that sort of thing with it. It's also got some nice crazing around and is very fetching. No uh, maker's mark, unfortunately. Hope you enjoyed this adventure today in the river and hopefully see you for the next one in the not too distant future.